The real ethos and the aim of Rare Collection uh, is to showcase those casks and those you know, points in our distilling history that uh, are really just sort of the zenith um, of what Glenfiddich can be. So um, looking at David Stewart and now Brian Kinsman hand selecting these casks of particular age and particular provenance purely just based on the integrity of the liquid and saying like if this whiskey manages to last you know in this case 64 years what was it about that it was so special you know and in many cases that's not scientific you know that's not programmed that's not the aim when we first lay these casts down but you know you will gonna f you are gonna find these incredible whiskies tucked away there and rare collection is our way of bringing them to the world you know i think it was just about you know creating a good range of whiskies but certainly from the 19, mid 1980s onwards, we, we started adding value um, with various, you know, cartons, gift packaging, decanters, you know, special editions like, like that, which now kind of feeds into a collector's market. I think collectability has probably only recently become, you know, as significant as it is. Um, certainly with something like the 1937, it's so incredibly rare but I do know what that went on the market for back when it was first launched, and it wasn't a whole lot of money in today's terms. The motivation really is just to bring these whiskies out there because we have the ability to, to harvest these great casks that exist. Collectability is probably more of a modern consideration. I mean, as I say at the time, it was, it was probably the oldest malt that was available in a bottle, which made it, made it quite, quite, quite special. It was, it was keenly but fairly priced and you know, very quickly it started increasing in value because there was just a limited number of bottles. With Rare Collection, you're also looking at this really interesting sort of generational handover where a malt master like David Stewart in, in the early 2000s when um, this was bottled, he is really sort of harvesting that legacy from his predecessor, Hamish. Um, and Glenfiddich's only ever had six malt masters, each of them laying down whiskies to the absolute best of their ability and then handing it on for the next generation. So it's this really interesting sort of thread that goes through each kind of era, um, but it's the malt master, you know, Brian in the, in the current era who, who almost benefits from the work that's done in, in many cases decades before. This 1937 um, is going to have essentially the same sort of framework as a, as a modern Glenfiddich, obviously being made here on site, but almost in a distillery that has gone through so many changes since then. So um, in that era, very likely distilled with some um, peat. You're looking at sort of changes and in innovations in distilling. So a whiskey that's um, made not with condensers, but with worm tubs and direct fire from coal. While there would be similarities, and I'm sure if you were lucky enough to set out a tasting of modern Glenfiddich going back to this one, you would definitely see that lovely red thread going through them. There are some great kind of historical nuances that exist within that one that don't exist anywhere else. You know, when you, when you open something, if you, or if, if, you, if you taste something of that age, I mean, it is, it's a gift from previous generations. It is like breathing in the air of the past, you know, when you open up an old bottle like this. I have to be honest, like with a, a collection like this, I'm very envious of whoever ends up putting this into their own collection because with Rare Collection, you know, these 50 year olds, they are so incredibly rare. Um, and if you do have the opportunity to, to open these and enjoy them, or just to, you know, maybe curate them for the next generation, you're really picking up something that is um, a very significant part of our history um, and whiskies that have been selected purely because they are outstanding. So you're getting something not only very rare, but very, very precious as well.